Good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Josh Owen. I am the Vignelli Distinguished Professor of Design and the Director of the Vignelli Center for Design Studies. Tonight marks the sixth and final lecture of the 21-22 academic year and of our Spring 22 Vignelli Design Conversation Series presented by Design Milk and RIT's Magic Center and made possible in part by the generosity of RIT alumnus Chris Bailey and Bailey Brand Consulting. I'd like to begin by offering my gratitude to RIT's Magic Center and their remarkable team of faculty, staff, and students for a successful collaboration on the lecture series this year. I'd also like to extend a very special thanks to Jamie Derringer, founder of Design Milk and friend to the Vignelli Center with whom we forged our current partnership. Jamie has moved along from Design Milk, but our shared mission in creating widely accessible, meaningful design content continues. And we're thrilled that Jamie has passed on her torch to Caroline Williamson with whom we are working tonight. Please look for details on next year's series and our continued collaboration with Design Milk by joining our mailing list on the Vignelli Center website and following us on our social channels. I'd like to also thank our interpreters for this evening, Cassandra Flores and Ash Harper for their work. Out of respect for our presenter, participants will be muted for the duration of the talk. We do, however, encourage you to enter questions you may have using the Q&A feature both during and after the presentation, and we'll try to get to as many of your questions as possible during our closing Q&A segment. Rochester Institute of Technology's Vignelli Center for Design Studies is an international hub for education, research, collaboration, and advocacy, which expands the scope of the programs in the College of Art and Design School of Design. The facility houses the archive of renowned designers Lella and Massimo Vignelli, whose works are icons of international design. The center and archives sit within RIT's College of Art and Design, which was built on the traditional territory of the Onondaga, or people of the Great Hill. In English, they are known as Seneca people, keepers of the Western Door. They are one of the six sovereign nations that make up the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, we honor the land on which RIT was built and recognize the unique relationship that the indigenous stewards have with this land. That relationship is the core of their traditions, cultures, and histories. We recognize the history of genocide, colonization, and assimilation of indigenous people that took place on this land. Mindful of these histories, we work towards understanding, acknowledging, and reconciling. As stewards of history and content, we must acknowledge and seek to learn from our context, bad and good, ugly and beautiful. This applies to the Vignelli Center as with any archive. The Vignellis taught us that design is a systematic framework for solving the world's most intractable problems. If recent times have taught us anything, it's that while we as humans are adaptable, our societies and systems have significant flaws. We're at a point when we need to have difficult discussions and to work to create a new balance in the world. In this, design must play a critical role. As director, I aim to make the Vignelli Center even more accessible and applicable by bringing in stimulating guest contributors from diverse and often underrepresented backgrounds who help us to consider design in innovative ways as our guest does tonight. The Vignelli's design as one philosophy leaves us with the universal message that design is a lens through which we can envision a more inclusive and sustainable tomorrow. This evening, we're delighted to welcome Amijai Bendersky Perez to our series. We appreciate his zooming in from distant Uruguay and enriching us with his perspective grounded in his lived experience there. Gabriel Amijai Bendersky Perez was born in Montevideo, Uruguay into a Jewish home in the year 5748 of the Jewish calendar or 1988 in the Gregorian calendar. He started his formal training by studying graphic design at ORT University, where he obtained a BA as an independent designer. He helped develop for Club El Teco Pinario, the 1891 brand and the visual identity system for their stadium. 
The social poster exhibition is part of the Uruguayan Plan for Human Rights Education. It was declared educational interest uh, of educational interest by the Ministry of Education and Culture. Thanks to the disposal of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the posters are displayed in Uruguayan embassies. Talks, workshops, and exhibitions were held in New York, Warsaw, Ottawa, Toronto, and in four cities around Uruguay. Amijai established La Patria, an Uruguayan graphic design archive which seeks to rescue and revalue cultural, cultural heritage by looking at the various proposals that graphic design has produced in the territory. It is appropriate that we complete this year's Vignelli Design Conversations lecture series with Amijai, who we playfully refer to in the center as a Vignelli super fan. Clearly, his passion for the Vignelli's impact on design has colored his own. Please join me in a warm virtual Vignelli Center welcome for Gabriel Amijai Benderski Perez. Hi, hey Josh. Nice to, to be welcome in such a nice way. It's a pleasure to, to be sharing my, my super love for the Vignelis with, with you and with the RIT. I'm going to start sharing my screen, but before doing, doing this, I, as Josh mentioned, we're going to have a few and A's at the end. So don't wait to write the answer right at the end. Just write it and Josh will uh, take note and at the end we will go by them one by one. Okay. Okay. So this presentation is divided in, in two. The first section is where I talk and present about myself uh, as a designer, and then we're gonna go into how the Vignelli 90 came to happen. The first project I want to, to share with you was that it is actually two projects for the same client. And we're talking about Club Atletico Peñarol, and it consisted in one hand in the creation of the visual language of Campeón del Siglo stadiums, a new stadium that opened doors five years ago. And the other one is a, is, you know, is a brand that positioned uh, Peñarol as the, fir as the first Uruguayan football team. This brand is inspired by the lettering found at the old headquarters. The typographic work is typical of Art Deco, a detail that reinforces the concept of longevity. The stadium logo was drawn from the shape given to its construction, where a central building is embraced by the grandstands. Later, the visual identity of Peñarol was incorporated, that is, yellow and black stripes. This project was developed with Fabiana and Santiago Vico. So this is the, the old headquarters, and we can see that like I mentioned just before, this, this type of letters belongs to, it has already a hundred years old. And just for, for the record, the architect that work in this building is the same architect that helped to, to construct the, the headquarters of the UN, right where you are. And this is the brand. As a, as a brand designer, this was constructed using the shapes that was given to the state to the headquarters, but the proportion of the letters they were tweaked in order to them to look a bit better, and the relationship of the numbers has to to have a, a better dialogue. This brand works in a way that it has symmetry. We know as designers or people as well that something that is eye pleasing is symmetry so you can you have the same number at the beginning at, and at the end and one number goes up and one number goes up down here we can see the the brand being in use of in the bracelet or here on the on the shirt the guy that is on the on the right uh, Diego Forlani he was um, 
he was the MVP of the World Cup of South Africa. And he was playing in, in this team that I'm also a fan, not a super fan, but a fan. And this was something that when you look at it, you know the, the, the design was well done. Why I say this? Because each flag was done by hand, by the crowd. And everyone got the logo perfectly. So this is a logo that is easy to reproduce. And it looks lovely to, to see how the work that you were able, you, you did on a computer, now it belongs to, to everyone, or at least everyone that supports this team. Something, and this is where the, the projects intertwine, the, 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 the grandstands of the stadium were painted using the, the, the letters we designed. And this is how the, the stadium looks from, from the front. So this one central building and the grandstand is like hacks the, this building, okay? And that's how the logo is. The, the brief that we got was to design um, a logo that it, it was inspired by, by the building. And as you, you saw before, the, the shirt is yellow and, and black with stripes. So that's how everything got together. The interior, how it looks, and please take a look at the, at the at the spotlights. It was very easy to to achieve the identity of of Peñarol just by using two spotlights, and there you get the 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 essence of of the shirt. Here's the the picture from the from the other side. Now we're gonna uh, talk a bit about La Patria. And La Patria is, is an, a Uruguayan archive of graphic design. It has over a thousand items, including posters, book, and record covers, logos, and stamps. The archive expects to revalue our cultural heritage through a look at the various proposals that the, the graphic design produces in Uruguay. So please visit lapatria.ui and follow the archive's Instagram, lapatria.ui, to learn more about it. So just to, we came from backgrounds that are different. For me, and I'm gonna tell you why I started this, this, this archive. I'm, um, I'm a designer that consumes a lot of design. And I discover that there's, there's a gap that I need to fill. And that is that I wasn't aware of my own background. So I have to go and, and, and study and construct it because there was no story that was built. And I want to, to, to learn about what was done where I was born. And the project started by going to, pretty obvious to go into the National Library. And I asked it for, to see all the, the flyers that were printed in the, in the 19th century. And I asked for flyers because I was interested in, in discover the, the role that design had in, the, in society. So back in the day, a flyer was what is a post is today. And one of the things that I was curious to learn is if it's, if it's possible to, to find um, a way, a European way of design because we don't have a school like uh, the, the US or the Germany or Japan has because they have 400 years or 200 years of, of having a, a, a letter press printing at their place. The, the letter press here in Uruguay arrived in 1970, so it's quite, it's quite new. But something that was discovered, and this is the, the most clear example, that here in Uruguay when we design we can notice the, the limitations, okay? It's not that we are poor. It, it, I'm gonna put a, a, a very clear example. Where you're from, when you sign in a, a cover for a magazine, maybe you have like five, six people working just for the cover. Here is one person. 
you work in the inside, you work in the cover, and you have to deal with everything. And from my perspective, that's very good because you are in charge of everything and you can um, lead where it goes. So look at this uh, headline that says Mil Onzas de Oro, it's translated as an ounce of gold. So this is a headline that has 13 letters. Three are lacking. And please pay attention at the last letter. And the last letter that is an actually should be an, an O, but it's a six. And I, when, I, when, I, when I look at this, is I, I just think about the, how uh, clever the, 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 the printing have to, to be in order to, to find a solution to this problem, because what he's going to say, you know, this, this flyer is going to be printed. No, you have to, it has to be printed and just find a way of doing it. And this is the best way it was possible. And this is the Uruguayan way of, of, of designing. Also, something that was discovered was a lot of Uruguayans that didn't um, live in Uruguay, but they uh, achieve an outstanding work. And here we we saying what is called a carte, and this was done by um, Joseph Jacinto Mora. And this is the kind of, of of drawing that takes me back to my to my childhood. I I it really resembles to the, the books of Where Is Waldo? Well, you can look at every single inch of this drawing, and you will find something that makes you you know, smile. Or for example, this kind of, of posters that was made in, in the 60s. And here we continue to see the same lack of resources and how it was achieved a great uh, design. If you look, the, 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 the letters are made by hand. This was done in this way because they were uh, trying to save money and trying to save time. Because just imagine if you have to put together a type, actually type on a letterpress, and then image has to be done in two separate places. But if you do the letters, the lettering, instead of using a typeface, you can do all in one place. So that's how this was achieved. And also something that happens with these uh, posters from Imprenta As is that they always use white as a color. This is a, a, a three color poster, but if you use white as a color and not as a background, then you have a new color for free. This is, this is just a beautiful poster where the essence of what jazz is. And again, it's, it's very cheap to make this poster, but that's being a uh, cheap design doesn't mean that it's the, that the outcome is going to be uh, worse than an expensive uh, design. It's just different, and it gives the um, it makes it more human that it was done. Like if, if you uh, try to compare with what was done in in Switzerland back in the day, it has nothing to do. It's just different style, and 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 design is is about that. It's to understanding that they are different approaches, and it's no one that is better than the other one. It's just different and all of us have a, a different approach. And again, for, for, for a play, two color poster, but white used as a color and the dialogue that happens between the, the, the handbag and the, and the face, it, it really stands. Just a, a, a selection of, of of logos that were included to, to the archive and each logo has to be carefully redrawn because back in the day they did all by hand. So that was, uh, it's not the most um, enjoyable work to do to be redrawing logos, but after you, you have a, a collection of a hundred logos, then you, you feel that you have uh, something very valuable. Also, as we talked before with, uh, with Joseph Jacinto Mora, the, the person that came with um, the, the design for the logo for the underground in, in the UK was Uruguayan as well. He was born here. Uh, the, the 
his parents came to, to Uruguay um, looking for from England, looking here for a new opportunity after being for five, six years, they decided it was better to, to go back. But meanwhile, in that time, Edward was born and he, he was Uruguayan. This is the kind of things that I was, uh, mentioned that we have to repel you because not many of us know that the, the underground logo was designed by a Uruguayan. And well, this is one of the is one of is the most incredible piece that we have uh, uh, at the archive, and it's also the oldest one. And it's an, as it says there, it's an album, but it's a very very unique kind of album. It's an album that was done in 1875, and all the album is uh, is collages made up with the. Um, little piece of papers that used to come in the match boxes. So unlucky we don't have many, many other information that the year and that belongs to was a Uruguayan person that um, did all the work. We think or, and believe that it is, was a woman because back in the day was this kind of work was done by somebody that is not working and just Look at the craftsmanship of this. For me, oh, I consume a lot of design and I have never seen lettering done with collage, like these, these, these numbers. But it doesn't stop here with numbers. It, it also makes letters. And here it says Fosforico, and it stands for, for matches. This is something that is unique. And just try to think all the work that the person have to, to, to do, to do it. They did in order to achieve this this result. First, to cut all the all the the shapes, and then to come up with the ideas. And this is Montevideo, the the capital of Uruguay, where I'm, I'm speaking. I was born. Look at the M. Just a person <laughs> turn around. This, this is incredible. And it doesn't. This album is not made up from from. Typography. They also have these kind of collages where this, it mixes the collages with watercolor in order to construct a, a scenario, and it, it has a, a link with the we were just saw with with Joseph Mora, the same kind of uh, illustration when you have to to look and, and pay attention to every part to discover what's what's going on, like the person, the, the man that is in the in the middle, that his hat just 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 blew. I'm going to talk about a project that was that goes by the name of Women, Peace, and Security, and this was is an, uh, a network that belongs to the United Nations Security Council, and Canada and Uruguay chair this this network, and the task involved in thinking of a symbol representing the joint work of these both countries. The image of a flower was chosen because they traditional person of personify feminine. As Kana is a founding member of the network, the bunchberry flower of this country was chosen. And very important, to avoid the inconvenience of which country appears first, the colors of the national symbols were exchanged. With this, an inter interesting visual result is achieved and a diplomatic action is fulfilled. So why a flower was chosen? Because it was, I, I realized that it's not possible to, to choose a, a, an image of a woman in order to represent a woman. Because if I choose a, a black woman, then all the, the let's say the, the white woman will be for, um, not being represented. The same if I choose a, a woman with short hair, then what's going to happen with all the women with long hair? So let's, instead of representing women, let's represent what is feminine. And this is what I was mentioning before when the colors were swapped. So which one goes first, Canada and Uruguay or Uruguay and Canada? And uh, as a designer, you have to be able to interpret and see your environment in order to get these kind of ideas. This idea came to my mind after um, looking at, uh, at a movie poster. I, don't, I actually don't, don't recall which poster it was. But it was two two people, two actors 
on the um, showing on, on the posters and the, and the names on top they would they, they would swap and they do that you know uh, for this same reason to okay it's not one that is go first is the name of one goes first and then the, the the image of the other one goes first and that's how this idea came into my mind this is very important when you are a designer that you have to uh, comprehend your environment in order to design for your environment and this is the the, the flower It's very easy when 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 you see the uh, the the flower on the left, how how just just to draw it, and and you spend three four days um, moving the the the, the actual points to one side to the other one to to achieve the the right shape. But how how I came up with realizing this? I make a recipe. I ask. Which kind of logo do I need? So if you look at the uh, at the two at the two national symbols, you will realize that one is the background is of one is red, the other one is blue. So the background of, of this new logo has to be purple. The the national symbol one is white, the other one is yellow. So the wood logo that I made has to have the, oh, these both colors. And I realized that I needed a flower, and it just I didn't do anything. And um, uh, this is uh, a quote by Dieter Rams that design is the better the design is, that uh, is when you have to do less. And this is the clear example where the system just just made up himself. And I was like uh, an operator of, of this system and how it looks in, in a flag. And this is this use shows a, a very big um, scenario of, of how the logo you, uh, behaves. And then it's very it's also very good to show the the, the login use in a, in a very small. I show very big now, very small, and you can see how it also behaves well. So now we're gonna be talking about Vinelli Noventa. That that's how we say it in Spanish. In English, is Vinelli Ninety. I just want to say it's Spanish for 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 you to hear it. How I I've been hearing about it. Since no, since a long time. So this is the poster exhibition to celebrate 90 years of Massimo's influence. It aims to create a reflection on the relevance of his legacy. It is an invitation to think about him addressed in a different way by using an image and typography applied to a poster. So we always think about the legacy of, of what the Bignelli is, but now we're going to express and do something that it was never done before that is using image and type into a poster because that's what is a poster is is type and an image and i would like to to thank first to to roger remington he i've been talking with with him since since many years uh, ago and he was the one that suggested to contact josh and and share the my my proposal that I want to, to do something with to to commemorate uh, Massimo. I want to, to to thank to thanks Josh and Jennifer for being so welcoming from for for everything that they done for for the project and for guiding me in making this happen the best way as possible. And of course, I want to last but not least to 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 thank my my team that make uh, this happen, that is Juan Martin Luisardo and Santiago Ternade. Without them, this was not possible. So why are they so relevant? And I write a, a couple of words. We're going to be seeing uh, words, letters, not uh, image now, just for a second. I just want to, to share with, with you um, why is for me so relevant and for sure what is relevant for, for our uh, whole environment. So they were both born in Italy. They ended up being known for opening the design studio in the United States. It was the first conceived as an international company. Both Leila and Massimo were designers, but Leila also led the company. That is, she was the businesswoman, the person who tied the knots of the negotiation. I like, and this is a sentence that 
I, I, I like very much. Without Massimo, there was no studio. Without Leila, there was no company. This was, this was vital and should be mentioned because its, act, it's activity defined the modern designer, the professional designer that works at a studio. When they started, they were alone. There were no other companies of their type. Therefore, it can be said that they fill a gap in the design offer. They were avant-garde, maybe they still are. They bequeathed to preserve that, that became rule. So variety, there were two designers, in my opinion, who best understood simplicity and constancy in the approach given to design since that established the style. They were not guided by fashions or trends. They achieved, on the contrary, their own design style and never abandoned it. The truth is that the Vignelli's designs are concise and vigorous. In a sense, they have accumulated a lot of time ahead. That is, they had and continue to have a future. Because they last a long time, they are not disposable, they have life. Quality is what lasts, and that is why they earn the respect of the environment and mine. So this is uh, uh, our resume of why they are so important for, for us as, as, as a designer. Even I, I have don't I didn't have the opportunity to meet them, but I feel so touched by by the way they they live and the way they they work. And this is a the timeline of of how this project uh, came to, to happen. So January the first, the domain Vignelli dot design was bought after noticing that Vignelli dot com was offline. So the Vignelli's website was vignelli.com and somehow I, I, I was curious to, to check what was going on with it and then I discovered that, that the site was offline and I bought the domain vignelli.design because I didn't want this to, to fall in, in the wrong hands. I know that this should be used for something related to them. So since then I was trying to, to, to do something with it but it needed this uh, this idea and this uh, initiative needed time in order to to bloom. On in July 2020, it was appreciated that the next year, that is last year 2021, was the, his 19th anniversary. And this idea was shared with 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 Josh. And we started to organize it and, and, and talking on how this could possible happen. In July, uh, one the next following year, year, the team was born. And that's when we, we joined forces with Juan Martin and, and, and Santiago to construct uh, the site. November the 30, 2021, the project was launched. And today, the project is presented. So the website, the website was designed taking Massimo's business card as a reference. In his card, we see that the layout is in two columns. One is empty and the other one with the information. The aesthetic of the site responds to his style, Helvetica medium on a back black room. And also the entire web uses a single font size. So this is the Vignelli business card. And it's just lovely to see this because the, here you, you can see that the essence of, of, of how uh, Massimo liked to design. And this is beautiful because why? Because it has composition and, and, and it's very obvious what is going on, but it's not obvious to do this. And one of the things that uh, Massimo um, did is not following oh, how a business car should be. He should do it what he knows the best and is used type and composition. And this is up there, the website. Look. He, he, one of the things that um, took the developers uh, a bit to, to achieve 
it was the, the horizontal scroll because the left has to be empty and we wanted to, to have some posters of, okay, we are inviting you to design a poster, but okay, but how Massimo designed posters? And that's for sure something that it looks, it had to be there. Also, if you take a look, the, when the, the, the orange, the one red um, is there, it, it fits the 50% the, the of, the, um, of the screen. And that's something also that how the, the website and the business cards um, relate. Um, the, 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 the website by itself was not um, enough. We needed to, to promote it with a, an Instagram campaign. So, and the campaign consisted of posts with multiple photos. The number of images per post depend on the length of the word. Each post has two different size headings on a color background. Okay, let's take a look at them. So this is this is what I was I was talking about. So you have uh, two headlines, and the, the 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 bigger one is the one that defines the how many um, photos the post has. So this is how it goes. And here you can see the the whole system. This all this um, image gives you uh, a clear example of how. Is constructed is is very simple. It's also this uh, uh, um, resembles the um, what it was done with uh, the Hella packaging. When if you get the this the small box, you get Hell, but if you get the big one, you get Hella. And this is how how the again how we use what Massimo designed in order to 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 do this and something that I won't I won't. won't don't, don't like to, to forget and to mention is that it was a, a big responsibility to to come to come with all these ideas because it's a unique uh, opportunity to design for Massimo. I don't know nobody that, that have the opportunity to design for him. And now we are, of course, because he was he was there. Who else is going to design for Massimo if he's not Massimo? But now we have to design for for him. It's like. He he and Leila is watching that everything is 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 tight. So the exhibition, the exhibition consists of two hundred and fifty posters from forty six countries. So we receive many many posters. There are designers. There's one guy from Croatia that sent eight posters. He was so inspired that he continued continued to to design and, and not posted that. All of them look alike, different ages. So please visit uh, vignelli.design to be notified when the exhibit launches there. You will find, you find a, a form that please fill it with your name and your email, and you will receive a, a, a newsletter letting you know when the, the exhibition will launch. So this is the list of participating countries, but le let's take a look at the map. This is how the, the the map looks. Of course, when when the first image that you get is like, yes, I know Africa. We we didn't we're not able to to paint many colors. We got two countries of, of Africa, but we got uh, almost the whole Americas. Europe is all almost all painted in in one red, and we got Asia and Oceania uh, as well. So this is. This is pretty, pretty, pretty good. 40, 46 countries is, is a lot. Here we can see um, a teaser of, of what the, the posters um, look like the, from just uh, 20 posters we, I think uh, we have here. But we're going to talk about the 10% of the posters that uh, of the, the, the posters that made up the, the exhibition. We're going to I'm going to be showing you 25 posters and let's talk about uh, a bit about them. So this one made by, by Paul, same idea, you know, that it was no possible to, to conceive uh, Massimo without Leila and Leila as, uh, without Massimo. It's like they were one soul divided in, in, in two bodies. 
also an, 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 an idea that um, was achieved in, in many different ways. And, and of course, it's going to happen when you receive a, a huge amount of posters that the, the resources to or the ideas or the concept to, to achieve uh, the posters is going gonna, is gonna to repeat. And the idea of, of using a calendar came up a lot, but in different ways. Like, for example, this one, when this uh, Ricardo realized that Massimo has seven letters, the same as, uh, as the week, and he did his own, his own calendar. Oh, something completely uh, different. This guy just, what the, all he did was to paint the nine and, and, and the 30 that it could be fine at, at the, at the Vignelli uh, Max 365 calendar. another calendar where everything was 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 removed and is 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 what is is showing is his birthday in 1931 he was born on on a, on a saturday this is not a calendar but it's a way of of, of counting and this was made by the the osborne ross studio in the united kingdom well he he used the l as a as a way of, of, of counting. And it's, and it's very good how the, the, the eye is almost there, you know, it's, it's 90, ah, almost there. And, and, and one thing that I, I would like to mention is when we share invitations, um, which I was liking to, to invite, not just designers that, that, are, um, that design in a, in a Let's say in a, in a modernist way. It was I was also looking because what Massimo is is that he everybody earned the, the respect that he he deserves. And it was nice to to, to see posters like this. And you're gonna see uh, also a, a poster designed by Ed Fella that they were completely in in in, in different in different um, uh, sidewalks. And it, it's nice to 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 see it's like, like a rock artist talking uh, about what pop music is, why not? If, if, if it's good, it's good. What are you going to say? That does, it doesn't represent me. It doesn't mean that, that I don't like it or that doesn't uh, represent me. It doesn't mean that it's not good or bad. And this is talk us about ambiguity. And ambiguity is, uh, if you have read uh, the Vignelli A to, to Z book, this is the, the, the first that represents the letter A. And Massimo, um, talks about ambiguity as very something good because it's something that is not defined. So you can represent one thing or the opposite. Again, uh, this is the, the other half that make the Triboro um, studio in, in Brooklyn. And is, is, is the name uh, Massimo Vignelli Nightings all made by with, with tape, uh, like is just playing around. It's, it's very playful and it's, it's very different from the from the posters we receive, and of course, if you if you take a notice, you, you can realize that it's all messed up. But on on, on the smallest is Massimo Vignelli, nineteen. Each the, the letters that are in red in Massimo are the one that the tape is red, and 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 so on. This is a poster that I, that I love because it's it's, it's clever. Is, is, is visually um, intelligent, intelligent. And I'm talking about specifically about how the, the, the two dots, the dot that is um, only one in white, and then if you, your eye goes down and that alignment is eye pleasing. And it, this talks a, a bit of how easy it is to please the eye, is the eye. And we as humans, we, we're trying to, to make things too complicated. And for the eye, the eye likes to, to, to find things align. I love these posters. This, the, the simplicity that these posters has is, 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 is quite unique. And uh, an idea that, um, that was used uh, a lot to represent the posters is the, the, the subway diagram that, that Massimo did back in the day. But also here is, is mixed with the with the with the Italian flag, and 
and the, the color green and the color red is is also is also used as as the as the as the line of of the subway. So this is so easy to come with these kind of ideas. It's like these kind of ideas. It's like I, I would like to have this 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 idea. Excellent work. And this is this is a bit uh, a bit playful. This is made by 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 Glenn. Glenn is the is the Canadian designer behind the the Ontario uh, mark. And uh, in the um, in the film, the documentary film, uh, Massimo uh, appears, and he 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 talks about uh, this design. So what you what you see in here, he talks very good about uh, this design. And what's going here, you can see Massimo's hand, but pointed at the at the blueprint of of, of the logo, just a, a way of, of of putting it together. A very playful. Uh, this is the guy from 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 Croatia that I was, was talking about that uh, submit uh, eight posters. This is very playful, okay. And and is 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 a way of of, of saying you know something. The, this all the all the lines, even the pink one, takes to 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 Massimo Viliani. And I love this poster because this is again this is the kind of idea that how how, how no. How oh, we didn't receive a hundred posters like this. Massimo stands for maximum in English, so minimum a Massimo. That's it. This just uh, this this quote is is is. I love this quote because this is there's nothing else than that can be on top of Massimo because this Massimo is the maximum. Very clever design by uh, by Alain. Massimo was the, the the kind of designer that know, knew how to to use the grid and how to use the proportions be, uh, between the grid, and how this uh, Andrea from Italy play with the circles to construct both shapes. These these posters uh, uh, reminds me of the poster that Massimo did for for George Lois, for the the name of of, of the, the the surname of of, of George Lois. Is, is 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 centered and each each of the five letters um, relates to to the next one. I'm sure that you remember the the, the poster that that the was for party, and all the letters were um, were intertwined. And it's it's funny because that poster was designed by Michael Berry while he was working at at Massimo. But here we, we we have the the initial letters intertwined with the, with his uh, with his birthday. Beautiful. Max is a, a tremendous e illustrator and designer from from Nether uh, Netherlands, and he sent us this uh, poster, and that it, it talks what we were saying before that Binelli was the kind of designer that he. He created a, a language because for for him was 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 to create a language, not just a, a, a design, for example. But what's going on with the American um, war mark that you have? What he did instead of having American airlines, you have both, both together in two different colors, and you can see that uh, being used until today. And that's a, a resource, a language that is 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 it's still being used. So that I, I the, um, the person in, in black that the, this poster has is is Massimo hugging all the all the, all the shapes, and a while um, after a, a bit of of, of Max uh, sending the his the other poster that was the first his first one he sent this as a second option, and again is how the 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 basic shapes are together. And in red, in the middle, is his heart. Max Phillips is a, a type designer, and, and and when you look at this B, it's incredible how the 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 the, the texture the, the 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 text does. It looks so eye pleasing. Imagine all the work that you have to come up in order for for to achieve. This 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 symmetry is beautiful. 
of course, has to be a, a work of a, a type designer. And Rocco, Rocco Piscatello, a, a former employee of, of, of the Vignelli of of Design, took a, a, a very Swiss um, way approach of, of designing. Even the, 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 the plus is, is, is in red that resembles uh, Switzerland. And it's, it's very nice to see how the, the text, the Vignelli legacy, 90 plus years, is, is lying in, in the cross and how the the, the colors and the proportions of the of the nine and the and the plus sign really work together. This poster has the the also for me is, I didn't see uh, see it before and the 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 way the Maximo was was showcasing his work that he put everything on top of a table all the different pieces that uh, make up a, a design system that it looks a bit disordered. And it's, it looks beautiful. And today we, we use it every day. But what he did here is to, to he took all the, the, the typefaces that Massimo used with the same text and used, and used it to compose uh, this poster. So you can see, for example, uh, the one that is on, on the bottom left that says Fodor, and it responds to, to the Fodor uh, system the same with the sky skyline and 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 so on. A very different different approach. Massimo was playing that he he this guy, this guy from from Turkey shared with me that he they were talking uh, when they were talking and that he he wanted to have a like an international uh, sign from the from Massimo Villani and that's the M. And the V, and this is how it, how it how it works. So instead of doing like the peace sign, just a V, you can you can include an M, and you will have Massimo Vignelli. And this is the the, the poster that I was uh, talking uh, a bit before. This guy is is, is Ed Fella. He's eighty six years old, and he was he was the one that I was telling you that he has a a completely different approach and. The, the, the big headline that you, you can see here that it's Maya Bodoni, it was, it was talking about the, the um, what happened in, in, in the 90s where um, the, let's say the, um, how to put it, the, the shock that, the, that we received when uh, the people from Emigre and, and Vignelli, they, they in, in, uh, exchanged some words of how design should, should be applied. And in the end, the uh, Susana Lico was uh, designing their own Budoni, and Massimo was invited to to design the 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 their own poster, their own promotional poster for for the Budoni made by Emigre. And if if you remember the the way that Massimo replies, the war is over. It's like saying, you know something? Okay, yeah, we we have different uh, way of thinking, but let's we love design so much that. Let's let's do it and let's work together. And something that also um, I want to to talk about this says is my Bodoni. Massimo was the kind of designer that make the own typefaces that he used, and the name that the Bodoni that he used that was drawn by uh, Tom Carnas was our Bodoni. And the text that this Massimo designed for Emigre is their Bodoni. Is 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 the the, the, the how how Massimo was was fun, but just a, a fun that is not uh, uh, laughing out loud. It's, it's, it's fun that makes you smile because it's, it's clever. And this poster, uh, what, the thing that I like about this poster that also uh, resembles to to a poster made uh, by Massimo is is how the 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 lines, the the subword lines, they look like like chips. And how the the coin and the ring designed by Leila they they come together in order to to give shape to and the message of of the of the what the exhibition is. I love this 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 poster uh, designed by by Hendrik, the the um, the sketch um, that is is the the roughness of the sketch to express. Um, 
the, the love for, for Massimo, and instead of using a, a, a letter D, he used a heart. You know, everybody loves, loves uh, Massimo, and, and even the, the, how the, the signature and the, and, the, and the main drawing, um, the, how they, they interact, it's, it says that the, the, the crosses stands for kisses. So it's like, I love you so much, I send you three kisses and, and I sign. It, it, it's, it's, it's very simple and, and, and very clever, and, uh, and it helps a lot to have the, the, the sketch because it makes it more human. We see in this poster that how the, 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 the texture is, is being interrupted by, by the 90 and how the 90s also in, in to try and it's, 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 it's really uh, visually powerful. And this poster designed by, by Debbie Millman that talks about vulgarity and how much um, Massimo was, was talking about the difference between what is vulgar and what is not. And this is a, a world that really, really um, talks about where, where Massimo uh, where was standing and where Massimo work stands. Uh, also, something uh, that I would like to mention is that we didn't receive many, many posters that was uh, handmade. And this is one I think that, if I'm not um, being mistaken, is we received three posters that was handmade. And we received a, a, a poster, and this is the last poster I'm going to share with you. You're going to have to following up the, the initiative in order to, to look at the, the, the other 90% of the poster we receive is designed by Geometry Drag. He is um, a guy that loves geometry and animation. And what we see in here is how the, um, he took, he took the, this idea by reading the Vignelli Canon. And there, it was a full page that he Vignelli is talking about proportions and how the, the DNA sizes, the paper sizes, uh, behave between them. And he made a, a lovely animation of how these um, proportions relate to each other. So thank you very much for, for hearing me. I hope you, you, you felt the, the excitement we have for, for these uh, exhibition and i'm looking forward to hear all the your questions thank you so much thank you very much uh Majai. it was a very interesting and enlightening um conversation there are um quite a number of questions that are coming in and they seem to be in two uh distinct areas some of the questions are asking about uh you and your background, and some are asking about the Vignelli project, uh, as you might expect, uh, because you, the duality of your presentation. So I'll start with a few of the questions that are focused on you and your background. Um, the first that I'm seeing uh, is, what inspired you to pursue graphic design in your career? Well, I'm the kind of person that I knew that I wanted to be a graphic designer without knowing what a graphic designer does. Um, I have a, a, and please go to my, to, if you go to my website, there, there in, my, in my, my home, right at the end, I have a questionnaire where I ask questions to myself, um, how I, I started with, with design and many other, where were my, I don't know, my, 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 my background and please to pay, Take a look there. It's like a, a, a quite long article where you can gonna get to know me a bit. For example, when I remember a, a, a situation where I I designed my own signature. I was I was six years old, and my, all my 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 drawings I I was signing with my name and the and the date. Why? Because I copy what my mom was doing. My mom um, is not a painter, but she painted as, as a hobby. So she was, if you see, and, and that's an image that I have there at my, at my website, if you see my mom's signature and you see my, my signature when I was six years old, it's the same one. So that was my, my, my first uh, task as a, as, a, as a designer. Wonderful. Um, 
I'm going to go with the next question, um, which is also about uh, the context in which you work. Uh, and this is, could you share a few notable designers from your area? And I think they mean uh, probably from uh, Uruguay. Well, the first thing that um, you have to do is again, go to the, to the archive and there you're gonna, you're gonna see a, a bunch of, of names. Um, the first one I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk is Marcos Larriero, that he was uh, um, my teacher at the university and he's the one that uh, taught me how to, to design logos. Then you, you can learn uh, a lot from Fernando Alvarez Cosi, that he has, um, his style was of very naive, very naive, and the, the use of simplicity was very good. As you, you saw a presentation in Prenta As, was huge here at, at Uruguay. And something I also want to share is the way that Pentagram works, these guys from Imprenta Us did it to 15 years before. I'm talking about uh, partners that have our, their own company, but each work separately. I thought that Pentagram was the, the first one doing that, but Imprenta Us did it 10 years before, 20 years before, because they started in the 50s and Pentagram is from the 72, if I'm not wrong. So, I don't want to continue saying names because I'm going to mention other names and it's, it's going to be, it's going to be politically, it's politically incorrect. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, another one dealing with, uh, I think, uh, Uruguay um, says that uh, graphic design, as you mentioned, uh, relatively new field uh, in your country. Do you see traditional art forms from Uruguay uh, playing into or playing a role uh, in the work that's made there? Well, something that is, is, is common here is, is the illustration uh, has a different um, hierarchy than photography. Designers here in Uruguay design mainly with, with illustration. I'm, I'm not from that um, path. I, I like a more, a more a different approach. It's not that one is better than the other one. It's just that for me, illustration is it has a different place. But yes, illustration is is and we respond to our our, our roots. Uh, how illustration got its place here in Uruguay? Um, it responds to the Cuban movement and the Polish movement. If you're not aware, with the posters that were done in in Cuba in the 60s, as well as in Poland please take a look at it. Here, for example, was um, was a magazine that, uh, and, and again, we, we the networks that we can, were, were built in back in the day were, were, were few. And um, a magazine that goes by the same name as Poland, the country, got, was uh, was brought here to Uruguay. So designers was, was, were, were buying a lot of those magazines and, and they saw what the Polish were doing. So I say, you know something, this is something that I can do. And just by drawing, because people, uh, people, designers um, that started to design, were actually not designers, they were artists. And it was, it was hard and it's hard to make money just by, by selling art. So these guys started, you know, something on starting to do uh, commercial art. And that's why, that's how design was called back in the day. Um, okay. So now I'm going to start to uh, select some of the questions that are coming in that orient a bit towards uh, the second half of your lecture, the Vignelli's. So let me start with um, when when were you first introduced to the work of the Vignelli's? Well, I was introduced by by the Vignelli's in the year which year it was. It was like 2014, something like that. I was introduced to 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 the Vignelis for by a, a a calligrapher, a Uruguayan calligrapher that goes by the name of Eduardo Basigarupo. He he actually met the Vignelis and worked for for him, and he introduced me to to his work. And I was like, I can't believe what 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 they what what they did and the way also that Eduardo talk about them is, is inspired me. It's like, man, this this is the right path. If I'm I'm gonna be a designer, this is the path that I. This is the correct way. There's no other way. And that's is something that I like to to think is that it happens something similar with with Picasso. You know, it's like don't draw like the, the Picasso draw. 
because you're gonna look like him and everything that you know Picasso is, a, is, a, is an artist that has like 60,000 pieces so don't go that way there's a, what we're trying to say is no don't try to imitate uh, emulate the, the designing approach because you're gonna fail don't go that way because first of all Vignelli is only one you're not Vignelli you did Vignelli place was already taken good um all right uh, now, there are a number of questions relative to the posters. Um, I'll start with what feels right for the beginning of that conversation, which is um, what steps did you take to get the Vignelli 90 project off the ground? I'm going to use a quote of, of, of Massimo. In order to be, to, to be successful, you choose three things vision, courage, and determination. That's it. If you have those three things, that's it. So, and and also, I and the thing that uh, was the the spark is, is is was the how much you have to to respect to 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 respect your what you're doing. And it was the I, I, I laugh at myself because when I when I bought the the, the domain, the nearly design. I just bought it because I know this is this is something that I need. I need to keep, and I and I, and I was there in a drawer waiting for 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 to be used, and that's also something. If I have to to uh, add a word to in order to 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 achieve something, is that you you need to be respectful with yourself and with with others. Hmm. Wise answer. Um, another good question is. Designers from all over the world submitted work for this project, speaking a similar visual language, despite various verbal backgrounds. I guess language backgrounds is what they mean. Can you offer some insight into your thoughts on design as a universal language? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna talk about, um, I'm gonna um, talk bad about myself a bit. I do something that I realized is is that I make a mistake, and I'm gonna share it with you in order to to cooperate. Is that we receive a couple, just a couple from the fifth, from 250 that they in their own language. We receive many many posters that are all in English, and it would be lovely to see all posters in all different languages. Yeah. That, well, that's something that okay, you know, something that's something that I missed. What you got, what I'm gonna do? I'm sorry that, that I I didn't see that going through. But um, we well, nowadays, and, and this is something that is in the mind of, of all of us, the the world is diverse, is very diverse. So when we we work and we always as designer works in a team, we need to have a a, a diverse team in order to design for a device for a, a diverse um, environment. So diversity is 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 very important because diversity is what gives versatility. Great. Uh, I think we have time for one more. Uh, sure. This might be the easiest and it, it might also be the hardest. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, the question is, what is your favorite Vignelli design? Hmm. I don't have a favorite. Honestly, I, I, I don't have a favorite because um, it's like, you know, I don't know if, if we have any parents around there, but if I ask you which one is your favorite son, you're gonna answer, man. If if I cut this finger, it's gonna hurt hurt me. If you cut I, this finger, it's gonna hurt me. So I don't. I honestly don't 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 have a favorite piece because, for example, when I go into the into into the, I'm I'm gonna tell you which one it is. It's their house. Their house. When when I I. I saw that the, the the house is, and this is just popping to my mind, eh? Because I was I was always look at uh, at the books and just looking because it's it's, it's it's lovely, just it's lovely to see lovely things, you know. Mm. And the one the image that um, that now I, I remember is like the, the kitchen when where they have all the all the the pans just hanging there, very simple, very very obvious, but. I, I never see it like that way, but specifically, I want to talk about the, the library 
they have if, and, and please take a look at, at that they have the all the all the books on the on the on the walls and they have the door in the middle and what is on top of the of the door they have a, a ball made of marble that symmetry is like my god who the hell have that kind of idea of, of putting a, 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 a ball of made of marble on top of a, of a, of the door it's like man it's so it's so it's, it's so obvious to do that but nobody did it <laughs> i think it's a it's a lovely way to end uh, tonight's presentation um Abu Jai, it was such a pleasure having you uh, very much appreciated uh, hearing your perspective and we're so grateful here in the Vignelli Center for Design Studies uh, for your contribution uh, to the world and sharing uh, Massimo's vision and drawing in so many unique and diverse voices who uh, have been touched by the Vignelli's uh, impact in the world. And we look forward to seeing your exhibition and uh, to using it as teaching tools, uh, both here and, uh, and let's hope around the world. So uh, take good care and we look forward to seeing more of you. To our audience, thank you for joining us. It's been a, a wonderful year of uh, very interesting speakers. Uh, tonight's uh, was a wonderful way to cap things off. We look forward to next year's uh, group of speakers. And if you stay tuned to our social media and join our emailing list on the Vignelli Center for Design Studies website, you can uh, stay abreast of what's coming next. So I wish everyone uh, good health, take good care, and uh, I'll leave uh, with a quote from uh, Amijai, which is, quality is what lasts. Take care, all. Okay, bye-bye.